Snestrunk. Hello, let's take a look at some more improvement patches for some Super Nintendo games, or quality of life patches as some people refer to them. These are not to be confused with ROM hacks, which are essentially entirely new games created out of existing content. Improvement patches just tweak things here and there. For example, in part 1 I talked about the SA1 patch you can use for Gradius 3 that eliminates virtually all of the slowdown in the game, or a scrolling fix for Secret of Mana that keeps your character closer to the middle of the screen so you don't accidentally bump into enemies. To get these to work, follow the corresponding link for each patch in the video description, download the file, and use a utility program like Beat or Lunar IPS to join together the patch file, which will either be an IPS, BPS, or UPS file extension, with the game ROM. If you need help troubleshooting, there's people on the ROM hacking forums that can help you out. Once again, I gotta start with an SA1 patch, another one made by Vitor Vilela, the same person who made the Gradius 3 patch, only this one is for Contra 3 The Alien Wars. Yeah, the slowdown isn't as blatant or even as noticeable in this game, but it's definitely there, especially when big explosions take up half the screen, or this example here with the wall climbing machine. What's happening here is that Vitor was able to take the schematics of the SA1 coprocessor chip and apply them to a game that never had one, and the resulting boost of extra processing power makes the game flow beautifully. Yeah, it's true, it makes this game really hard, as if this game wasn't hard enough, but I still really enjoy the hell out of being able to experience stuff like this, and it's well worth checking out for yourself, especially if you've played Contra 3 front to back a gazillion times like I have. Next is a patch that got mentioned a lot in the comments of Part 1. It's for Mega Man X3, and it's referred to as Zero Project, which makes Zero a fully playable character throughout the entire game. Justin3009 and Metal Wario 64 are the two people credited for this one, and they really went all out making this one a way better experience than just vanilla Mega Man X3. There's a save system, a lot of the slowdown has been reduced, and they really made sure Zero played much differently than X. It's not just X with a new coat of paint. Zero really is his own fully realized character here. Also, the ride armors here are immediately available. You don't have to unlock them, and that's awesome because, well, you actually get to use them. Imagine that. If you like Mega Man X3 but haven't played Zero Project, then this is an absolute must play. It's a massive improvement over the original. There's an improvement patch available for the Super Nintendo edition of Final Fantasy IV titled Naming Way Edition. Credit Rodimus Primal and Vivify93 for getting this one off the ground. It just cleans up the entire game more or less, using modern names that better match the Japanese edition, and all items, jobs, commands, spells, and enemies are all renamed. Enemy stats are altered to fit the original Japanese version, and there's even a dash button that you can use on the world map. And most importantly, it cleans up the translation. So if you want to play Final Fantasy IV on Super Nintendo, I highly recommend doing it with the Naming Way patch. Speaking of Final Fantasy retranslations, there's also one available for Final Fantasy VI, referred to as the Ted Woolsey Uncensored Edition. Again, this is an attempt to restore the original intent of the Japanese translation, since there's quite a bit of stuff that was censored when it was localized. To quote the patch readme, the goal was to make the SNES version uncut and to clean up the script, but keep the nuance used by Woolsey in the original game's release, unquote, as well as uncensor the graphics, restore character class names, and rename monsters and items. There's a few bug fixes here as well, but no major balance changes or anything like that. Again, if Final Fantasy VI is one of your favorites, but you haven't played it with this patch, you owe it to yourself to try it out. Now here's a really interesting one for Super Mario All-Stars, and it just goes to show how detail-oriented certain ROM hackers are. It's specifically for Super Mario Bros. and the Lost Levels, and it has to do with how Mario rebounds after smashing a brick, and how it's not quite faithful to the original versions, since Mario somehow keeps going up even after smashing the brick. This patch fixes that, and not only are the physics corrected here, but the missing thump noise that's in the original game is brought back as well. Shout out to BMF54123 for making this one. It's a great demonstration of how no stone goes unturned when it comes to fixing, adjusting, and improving these old games. Here's a more simple, straightforward patch for the game's Seventh Saga, courtesy of Shatai. For some reason, when Seventh Saga was localized in North America, they decided to make the game really, really hard and totally unforgiving. The original Japanese version of the game is much more approachable and player-friendly, so this hack essentially just reverts the difficulty balancing back to how it originally was, and the game is a much better experience as a result, especially since once you meet your rival, whoever that may be, you actually have a chance in hell of defeating them, since this patch allows for proper balance 
balancing. Seventh Saga is a pretty good game, and if you gave up on it because of the difficulty, try it out with this patch, you might change your mind. Here's an improvement patch for a lesser known title, Rockman and Forte. The Super Famicom edition never left Japan, but it was eventually ported to the Game Boy Advance where it was renamed Mega Man and Base. This game has generated a lot of mixed opinions, but this patch for the Super Famicom version allows you to switch between Rockman and Forte at will. Just press the select button, and that really goes a long way making this one a lot more fun to play. It's not perfect, there's some glitches here and there, and some balancing issues, but it's one of those things where it feels like this is how the game should have been structured all along. Thanks to Purasab for this one. Here's a really fun one I found for F-Zero titled Eternal Boost made by Ninja Kira. An Eternal Boost is just that. Instead of having a regular accelerator, you just have a boost that never ever stops. Sure, winning races is pretty easy, but the further you get into the game and the tougher the course is, just merely surviving is the real challenge here. The health system has also been modified a bit to accommodate this so you don't freaking explode every time you hit a wall or whatever. So yeah, if you've played F-Zero to death and you still have all the tracks memorized, this is a fun one that's a fair challenge. Here's one I know lots of people have been clamoring for years, it's for Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, and yep, you guessed it, it's a patch that turns off the crying baby sound. In fact, Mario doesn't cry at all, this patch fixes it so he just kinda floats around all chill. There's a few other minor alterations here as well, like changing the pitch of the alarm sound so it's a little less grating. But yeah, if you love Yoshi's Island but can't stand the sound of that crying baby, then this patch is for you. Finally, here's a mod that's not necessarily for a game, but for an emulator. A fellow by the name of Derkun has put together a mod for the BSNES emulator that performs Mode 7 transformations at up to four times the horizontal and vertical resolution. In other words, it's like HD Mode 7, and it's pretty dang cool. It's still in the beta stages, and it doesn't work with every game that utilizes Mode 7, but it does work with Super Mario Kart, Pilot Wings, F-Zero, Contra 3, Hyper Zone, and many, many others. It is really cool to see stuff like this being made, especially for games like Pilot Wings, which are kinda sorta outdated, but with HD Mode 7, this truly breathes new life into it. Alright, that's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.